Hey guys, how we doing? Black and white Christianity coming at you for another podcast, another hot topic, and we're glad that you're here with us. Tonight, we're going to be talking about homosexuals in leadership at the church, in leadership in staff, uh, eldership, pastors, volunteers, in any kind of position that would be over or helping across the board in the church. Should we be allowing this to happen? So that's what we're going to be discussing tonight in depth. We're glad that you guys are here with us. And uh, let us know where you guys are, are listening in from. We'd love to hear from you. Um, Tyreek, how are we doing, my man? I'm great, my brother. How are you? Very, very good. Good to see you. Uh, congrats on your move and your selling of Thank your house. You. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. So let's just get right to it. A lot of churches are divided on this. We talked about something two weeks ago the churches are divided on, women preachers. This is another topic. Should actively practicing homosexuals, people that identify as gay, I want to be very, very clear about that because it's important. This is not someone that's struggling, that is resisting, that has those thoughts, doesn't act on those thoughts, um, whatever the case may be. This is somebody who is unapologetically unrepented of this particular action and they said look i may they identify as a gay christian we have a big big issue uh with that situation and the question then remains is and i'll just ask tyreek here since he's with me should we be allowing these people to volunteer to have leadership roles to pastor churches a, a resounding no a resounding no the, the Bible talks about um, homosexuality um, and, and a verse that I don't have on me right now, but it's just coming to my mind. It says that, uh, um, that uh, th these people will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Like Leviticus chapter 18, and verse 22 says, you shall not lie with a, man, with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. So, I went and I looked up abomination and it says a thing that causes disgust or hatred. So this act, it causes the almighty to have a level of disgust and hatred for it. And if we are serving the Lord and we want to do what the Lord says, the Bible says, you love me, you keep my commandments, you do what I say. If I say a homosexual will not inherit the kingdom of heaven, why are we giving them leadership roles in the church? I'm really trying to understand that. And I'm like very thrown off by the fact that this is a thing. This is a conversation that we have to have because it's something that's happening. And right. it's scary and it's right. upsetting and it needs to be talked about. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of this is veiled under the umbrella of love, tolerance, acceptance, um, inclusion. You know, all of these words are used to validate um, these people being placed in volunteer roles, in children's ministry, in, in, in pastor, in elder, in all these different uh, very, very holy and sacred um, offices and we're allowing this to happen because we're just supposed to, we're, this is our way of showing we love them. Uh, that is not the correct way of showing love towards this particular situation. Um, if your church is okay with having a gay pastor and they're reject, essentially what they're doing in their action is rejecting the scriptures. If they're going to reject it in that place, how, how many other places are they willing to twist and break and put aside to validate this new idea that love is tolerance? No, let me tell you something right now. The biblical love is truth. And the truth is that that is a wicked lifestyle, okay? Now, I'm not saying that uh, uh, sin isn't sin isn't sin. It is, and it needs to be addressed. But if you're going to be blatantly open about this, and put it out there for everybody to know about. You know, it's not, not something you've done in secret. Nobody knows because we're not all in your life. I feel the same way about somebody that's actively committing adultery. If a pastor is actively committing adultery and they're out about it, yeah, I'm cheating on my wife. 
that person should be removed from their office. Elders, ministers, volunteers, don't matter. So this is about the topic that's hot today right now that we're dealing with. I want I want to I want to step on what you're saying here a little bit as well. It's it's like we we all have a level of responsibility. We we're, we're, the Bible calls us one of, one of the fruits of the spirit is self control. The Bible tells us that we need to be we need to control ourselves. We need to um, strike a blow to our flesh. We need to subdue that thing. And and um you know and I understand where you're coming from, but I just want to make it clear. We're talking about like you know um, you're you're openly doing this, even if you're secretly doing this. You need to have you need to have the the self like I'm I'm not even looking right. like you need to have the um the integrity to be like I need to step down from this role until I figure some stuff out. Like like don't even you, if you if you feel like you're gonna be judged if you feel like you're gonna do any of that you know you know so. You need to step up and say, you know what? As right now, I don't feel like I need to be in this leadership this leadership role. I, I'm I'm dealing with some things, and I don't feel like I could be an effective leader. Y'all pray for me, or y'all or y'all keep me in prayer, or whatever. And you need to have the integrity and the understanding that every second that you are in a position where people are looking to you, where people are trying to get understanding from you and like glean from you or whatever. And you are dropping the ball in the way of integrity. God is not with you in your pursuits. So you're mm -hmm. doing this thing by yourself and you're very susceptible to demonic influence. So you need to take a step back and work on what you have to work on before you want what. And 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 there's just more, there's just more responsibility on you. I want to read another scripture and then I'll let you uh Get out there. Well, let me just see where I'm at. Um, this is this is uh, I'm not going to read the scripture to you all. Look it up for yourself. This is Romans uh, chapter one, 26 through 28. What I wanted to key in on is this says um, they, they, this the homosexuality. They're receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error, receiving within themselves the due penalty for your error. Like this sexual sin is the only sin that if that affects you internally. Like, it's usually got all these sins you're doing outward things. This is an inward thing when you're doing this sexual sin. And and we and we have to be we have to be cognizant of that because you you are compromised. You are not where the Lord is capable or, or even willing to use you in this capacity. So James I think though one, go ahead. One go second. ahead. James go chapter ahead. one and eight, it says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you are in a leadership position, you need to be solid. Your foundation needs to be laid. You need to be a man or a woman of God, and you need to be ready and and capable of doing the things that the Lord has called you to do. And you can't do that when internally you know that you're not right. You know something's not wrong. You, you, I mean, not right, and you're and you're not in a place to be able to, to to be effective. So go ahead, well, my friend. No, it's I, I I agree with what you're saying, but to your point with what you said, integrity. If this person had integrity, they would have never stepped into the role to begin with, because they would have known that they were actively practicing this particular lifestyle, and they knew that scripture was against said lifestyle. So it's actually twofold. The individual should have never stepped up and said, yeah, I want to take this role on, even though I know very clearly it says that I should, this is an abomination and I shouldn't even have this role because when Paul's talking about ministers, he said of one wife from a man having one wife. So that would mean a man and a woman, not a man and a man or a woman and a woman. No, that's a no go here. But then against the staff as well. Why would you even consider that person? Why would you even think to even interview that person or put them on staff? So I have an issue with the staff. I have an issue with the individual. And now I'm going to come after the layman. If you know that the church that you're going to visit today has a gay minister about face out to the parking lot and take off, 
do not sit under that person. That is not a true pastor. That is a, a, a false apostle. That is a false prophet. That is a wolf in sheep's clothing. That is not a biblical pastor. So if you call yourself a believer and you're willing to sit underneath a gay pastor, you need to start asking yourself, am I really truly following what scripture says? Because in this particular scenario, you are not to sit under somebody like that. And what we have today is this want for people to embrace the church. And so for people to embrace the church, what do you got to do? You got to open it up to a lot more things because the church, a lot of people's minds outdated. It's not groovy. It's not up to date. It's old timey. So a lot of churches to fill the seats, butts in the pews, they have compromised. They've allowed things to enter the church that are ungodly, unholy, and not biblical for the sake of being modern, being cultural, being up to date. Walter, I just got to ask, you know, as an advocate for the people, what about a male that has fully transitioned to be a female? They look like a female. They have the parts like a female, you know, and they now they, you know, they know in their mind that they that, you know, they were born a male. That was a mistake. First and foremost, that was that was a oopsie. Right. Like, I know I'm supposed to be a woman. So now I am completely transitioned and now I look like a woman, all of that kind of stuff like that. And now I want to marry a pastor that like is okay with my transition because now I am a woman. So why why is that a no go? Well, why why is that it, not okay? it doesn't it doesn't matter how you dress it up or modify it. The chromosomes are the chromosomes. The genitalia, even if you've had your genitalia mod modified, you know, a man yeah. <laughs> is a man is a man is a man is a man. I don't care how you dress it up. So if you are now a transitioned from a man to a woman, and you'd like to marry a man, that is still a homosexual relationship, period. There is no opportunity. If God created you a man, a man you will be. When the end of all things come and judgment day happens, guess how you'll stand before the Almighty? As a man, you will not stand before him as your new transition self with all your modified parts and upgraded goodies. Not going to happen. Same with the women that want uh, that want to do what they want to do. No. I don't care how you can Barbie doll yourself. Not going to happen. So any church that's worth its salt, any church that holds to the teachings of Jesus will reject that. Hands down. I want to read something. First, first, first Corinthians 5. Verse 12 and 13, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. Okay. If we see a bunch of gay people on the street corner, they're not Christian. They're just pagans that are being gay. I don't need to judge them. They're lost. They don't know Jesus. They don't add hold to scripture. They're living that lifestyle. I can try to tell them the good news of Jesus, but I don't judge them. What I judge is the people within the church that think it's okay to do this stuff. It's not okay. Via scripture, because you claim the same Jesus I do, and he says, uh-uh, not going to happen. So we have to hold one another accountable, like what Tyreek had said earlier. You have to not only be accountable to yourself, but you have to hold one another accountable. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sounds like you're judging people. And the Bible says, like, if you judge somebody, you'll be judged with the same measure you get, which you judge that to them. So why, why is it okay for you to judge somebody in the church? I'm glad you asked, advocate of the people. I'm so glad you brought that okay. up. Okay, all right. <laughs> so when people read that, I, when people, understand that. Yeah, I feel you. When people read that scripture, judge, judge lest you be judged or judge not lest you be judged for the, whatever the measure you judge with, people misread that. When they read that, they think, I'm not supposed to judge anybody because I don't want to be judged. Newsflash, we all get judged at the end, period. <laughs> Judgment's coming. So if you're looking at that verse and saying, oh, all I got to do is tolerate. 
tolerance across the board, and I get to skate my way past judgment. Not going to happen. What that verse means is judge rightly, judge correctly, because if you're judged by the measure you used, if you judged correctly, guess then how you'll be judged? Correctly. Righteously. Righteous Righteously. Judgment. Righteous Absolutely. judgment, right? Not with unjust scales, right? Not with right. hypocrisy. Not with things that uh, uh, are, are unjust. No, you'll be just. You'll be judged righteously and fairly because you did the same. So read your Bible <laughs> mm-hmm. and learn what it means. And stop taking it fourth and fifth regurgitated from your grandmammy, fifth one away, who said that's what that means. Look for yourself. Come on, people. Oh, man, so, absolutely. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What, 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 I, what I want us to understand here is, is as a, for those of you out there that are staunch believers and hold to the, to the Bible and hold to Jesus' teaching, when you see this stuff, it's almost comical. It's sad, grieves you, but then you have to you have to kind of look at this and just be like, what is, what is happening? It's madness. I watched a video the other day of a active practicing gay pastor who was at the pulpit preaching. And as he was preaching, all of a sudden all the lights in the church shut off and thunder and lightning crashed outside. And he tried to kind of like power through it and get back to the podium and be like, uh, and talk over and the thunder crashed so loud it drowned him out. And then all of a sudden when it was finished, the lights came back on and he was like, uh, uh, you don't need to be considering that as judgment. That's not judgment. Like he immediately wanted to negate that as not from God. I'm, I'm not being punished. I'm not being uh, warned that I shouldn't be in this position. That's the level of blindness that is in that scenario. And somebody from the congregation said, preach. So uh, again, that g- gives you the level of health, spiritually speaking, of those that are sitting under such a man or woman in that situation. Tyreek, what are your thoughts? What have you seen? What have I seen? Oh man, I, I've seen, I've seen uh, the, the homosexual like deacons and bishops and you know uh i've seen the the homosexual uh praise team worship leading like that that kind of stuff and I, and i'm all, and i'm always i'm always just so very curious because these positions are in the bible that's where they get those names from bishop deacon right. uh, you know all of that kind of stuff like that and and when you look up those positions there's there's criteria there absolutely there's criteria there absolutely. it's not like it's just like this is a name go for it you know what i mean it, there's 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 things there that's like right. and and i i didn't i didn't write them all down but what like you know or exactly what it was but like one thing stuck out to me for sure and it was like if your house isn't in order you should not be doing this because if you can't, if you can't have your home, if you can't, excuse me, if you can't have your home in order, then how to, how are you going to keep the church in order? You have right. to have foundation here. It's, it says you have to be stable. You have to be on the rock of the word of God. And mm. And when you and when you have these things kind of going on, you are double minded. A lot of people look at double minded with a very like messed up perspective. It's like, oh, you know, double minded is when you, you know, you don't know if you want Chinese food at McDonald's. Like, stop, stop it. That that's not double mindedness. Double minded is when you when you have you want this. You have the um the the appearance of godliness, but you deny its power. That's what mm. this is right here. Like they they want these positions and they want to be a uh, influencer and they want to and they want to win souls to Christ, but your soul is still in danger. Right, right. Because That's exactly right. The actions and what you are doing is an abomination to God. Yeah. Stop taking those those very powerful, staunch words out. And putting softer kitty gloves on 
your lifestyle is an abomination to God. You're, it, it says you're not inheriting the king. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So why are you trying to preach and teach other people on the way and you're not on the path? You're not on the way. You're not in the building. You're not even in the vicinity. Don't do Scripture that. Says, like, I'm Scripture sorry, says to thing. take, yep, 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 go ahead. Le Leviticus 20 and 13. This was talking about uh, what the, the consequences for um, for the, the homosexual lifestyle. It says, surely they will be put to death. Their blood is on their own hands. As a leader, when you lead somebody astray, their blood is on your hands. It's important to understand that. And leadership position comes heavy, staunch responsibility, staunch punishment, staunch consequences for not doing what you're supposed to be doing or leading people astray. These people already have their blood on their hands. Like this, this sin was a, what the penalty for it was death. This is intense. Understand that that's, Le, that's Leviticus. People are going to say, oh, that's Old Testament and stuff like that. Jesus said not a jot of tittle. So, I mean, like, like, let's stop. Let's just stop the madness. That's all I want to do is just get get the madness out of the way. Just move and let's let's look at scripture. One of the, one of the signs that a culture is almost completely, um, how do I say this? given over to a reprobate mind, like an entire culture, is the a sexual perversion. When we can't even get that right, you know, there's a difference between having a lot of violence, having a lot of crime, having a lot of greedy people, having a lot of life. But once you get to that sexual place, it seems like that's the tipping point. When we are marrying men to men and women to women or having them do what they're doing out in the culture, that's one thing. But when that starts to enter the church, we're on our way out. We're on our way out as a culture and as a church, because that is and I mean, I mean, the American uh, corporate church. I don't mean the true church um, in that form because we were, we were allowing this type of perversion. First of all, how can you have a gay preacher and then come across some of these passages? If he's truly preaching, does he just never touch on them? Does he just scoot right across those when he gets to some of these passages? I don't know, we'll, just, we'll just move on. Or does he actively preach against it even though he lives in it? The, I'm going to read this. First John 2, starting in verse 3. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his words, love for God is made truly complete in them. And this is how we know we are in him. So if you say you're in Christ and you don't do what he says, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. And there are a lot of people out here that claim to be Christian and validate a homosexual relationship or are in one themselves and will curse up and down and swear up and down and do all these vulgar things up and down and be violent and say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. You are deceived in those actions if you're actively doing and participating without feeling any conviction at all. So... As believers, brethren and sisters, we must reject this. We must reject this homosexual leadership volunteers. Who wants one of these people to be caring for their children? You bring your child to church. If they go to the daycare or they go to like a children's ministry that the church has, would you like one of these homosexuals to be teaching and caring for your children? I wouldn't. I don't want them promoting that kind of stuff to my kids. It's not going to happen. And I'm the guardian of them. So there's just not, not going to be Tyreek. Any thoughts before we close for tonight? Well, what would you say? What would you say to people that say, I know a lot of homosexual people and they're good people. They're solid, decent people. They, you know, they pay their taxes. You know, they, um, they, they it's a lot of things that they, they don't, they don't, they don't, they're not out here killing people. They're not out there. They're just trying to live their life, you know? So I like, I don't really care about that scenario, like what they're doing and stuff like that. Sure. I let them teach my kids. Like they're not teaching them that they're teaching them math. They're teaching them this and they're teaching them that. What would you say to somebody like that? 
I would say that the standards that you're holding them to are a cultural standard. They don't be, you know, they're good people. Well, what, first of all, what is good? Who are you holding that standard up against? What the culture say is good or what the Bible says is good? Because the Bible says there is none good. No, not one. And so just because this person's a nice person doesn't mean they're biblically sound. Doesn't mean they're living. Does not mean that they're not living in an unrepentant form of sexual perversion. So if you're okay with making excuses for that person and their lifestyle and putting your children around them, you're not, you're not really being responsible. As a believer, I'm talking to, I need to make that very clear, I'm talking to Christians right now. If you are not discerning enough to say, I don't want that person speaking into my or my children's lives, you need to address yourself. And you need to get back in the word and understand that that is not love what you're doing. That is tolerating wickedness and validating a sinful lifestyle. If that person's in your church, you need to address them and you need to go to the elders and ask what's going on. So end of, end of the night, guys, here's, here's what it is. Reject this, find a Bible believing church and go there. Do not sit under a homosexual preacher. Do not let them teach your children. Do not let them do any of those things. We love you guys and God bless. May the Lord be with all of you.